the bigger issue is how worn this thing is on the front. Could be wrong. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. How you doing today? Hope you guys are doing well. Got a little project we're doing. It's just another little task. Like it goes along with the whole theme here, fixing a ride stuff. You gotta fix it if you wanna ride it. You ride it, it's gonna need to be fixed so you can ride it again. <laughs> All right, guys, but first, if you guys don't know what these are, stay tuned, so I'm about to tell you. But first, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Let I me mean, come on back, check out what we got going on as always. And always make sure to smash that like button if you like what you see on the channel and this video and all the other stuff. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay, so I got my 06 CRF 250R here. This is a Honda, obviously. And uh, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and show you what these two pieces are. I'm sure some of you know by now, but if you don't, stay tuned, because we're gonna talk about it real quick, and then we're gonna put it in. Okay, so we have these two little pieces here. They go in the carburetor. This is your floating slide. This goes on the front of the slide, valve in the carburetor, and then this is the seal. And what happens here is you get a little bit of air leaking through this hole, uh, you know, intentionally, but uh, if your seal has gone bad, this will, you'll start getting, or if this surface is worn, it'll start allowing a little bit too much air and you'll be running a little bit too much uh, air in your system and it'll throw off the air fuel mixture ratio. So um, you can't really buy this seal by itself that I know of. So I ended up getting these parts from Rocky Mountain ATV and they sent them pretty quick. Uh, they were about $20 less than uh, buying at retail. Uh, they stock a lot of parts in so I would always check there first. They have full parts diagrams to look up your machine and see if they got your parts in so do that for sure link for them will be in the description okay now that the carburetor has been taken out after you pull the rear subframe and you got to pop off the two clamps of here uh, your fuel line whatever type of other lines you got going to your carburetor pull your carburetor out this is where you end up so you can see that on this side here of the carburetor you have that plate well the plate wears and the seal wears so that's what we have there so you can get to the top of it by opening up the top of the carburetor and you'll need a couple of uh, I believe it's three millimeter well not a couple you'll need a three millimeter socket head bit or you will just get yourself a set of allen wrenches pop that off then you can get to the slide in there i like to make sure that any area that i'm going to be working on in the carburetor is uh at least moderately cleaned off from any free debris Definitely want to be working with clean hands, that's for sure. And it's always best if you're going to be doing work like this on the engine at all, just to give your bike a good pressure washing before you even start the task. Okay. There's your cap. There's your slide down in there. Now the problem is we can't get this all the way up unless we undo this screw here. Now 
Now you have the ability to pull this all the way up and out. And that is your slide valve assembly. Now it doesn't necessarily look like there's a you know a whole lot that's you know wrong with this. Seal looks like it's in good condition, you know. But, you know, they do lose their tension over time. I mean, this thing just kind of, it looks a little more flat than the other one does. But I think the bigger issue is how worn this thing is on the front. You can see that wear pattern there. It's definitely old. And these do have an orientation. You can see from the first part of the video that you can see this little hole down in there. When I got this bike, this was actually in wrong. Which I think contributed to why it was running lean, but also the fact that it was so worn out. So, I don't know how worn these wheels get either. I mean, it's interesting. That's the only one that comes off. So, you want to go ahead and clean all this up. Just make sure you're working with a clean surface. May as well go ahead and pop the needle out as well. And if you are fully rebuilding your carburetor, you're going to want to replace all these wear items. I actually have, uh, this is a new needle. I also have a new emulsion tube, new jets. <laughs> this is really the only thing that I haven't replaced, you know, other than this as well. But it looked like there was some grime up in here. Once you're confident, well, we'll go ahead and leave this out for now, actually going to install the plate first Just like that. Then you'll stick your needle back down through the valve. It's your needle keeper. And once again, you'll want to lift your valve, slide valve arm up. Okay, so you might need to reach in here and grab your needle so it seats properly. At this point, you can go ahead and screw your arm.
arm screw back in. Just like that. And we'll go ahead and put our cover back on. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and clean the cover off. Clean, 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 folks. You want things clean. Always want to wear eye protection when you're working with chemicals. Let's give the gasket a wipe down. I was told that if you have gaskets that are dry, as long as they're not cracked, you can soak them in ammonia and that will soften them back up and make them swell up to original size. Okay. Don't forget your throttle position sensor harness holder. Just want to snug these up. You don't want to break them off or anything. So that's that. So now we're going to go... Actually, you know what? While I'm here, I'm going to make sure that this bowl is nice and clean. And then I usually put a little bit of grease on these. Set that off to the side. Everything appears to be clean. Always want to make sure your float level is set appropriately. And you don't want to hold it upside down like this and check it. You want to just let it fall where it's supposed to, and this should be level. I believe these are six millimeters.
Alright, that's it. Uh, last thing to do is to put the... Put a screw back in. You want to make sure that your washer and o-ring didn't fall out at the bottom. Now we're going to put this back in the bike. <laughs> 